This is the key sentence though. The company does not use derivative instruments to hedge its commodity price risk to silver. So if there is a silver spike and there will be a silver spike and we'll get in there in a second as to how that could happen and very soon, just like it just happened in nickel. Hello there, my friends. Rafi here from the Endgame Investor with today's weekly silver report for Arcadia Economics. And there's just too much going on to cover it all. Things are starting to fall apart. Markets are starting to blow up. We're going to go into nickel. We're going to go into its relationship with silver. We're going to go into Russia. We're going to go into its silver production. And we're going to go into what looks like the second Bretton Woods Agreement with the United States attacking Russian gold reserves and the gold situation on COMEX getting to epic proportions in open interest and how that relates to silver as well. There's just too much going on this week, but we will begin with nickel. As I'm sure all of you have heard by now, the nickel market exploded. There was a huge short squeeze that has taken out brokerages and the London Metal Exchange had to suspend trading on the LME in order to save these brokerages from bankruptcy. What happened was that Russia produces 9% of the world's nickel. And when a country that it produces 9% of the world's anything gets invaded, you have the danger of a short squeeze. Where did this short squeeze come from? It came from nickel producers who are short nickel to hedge their production. The problem is when they go short futures, they get margin calls if the price goes up way too fast. So while they make more money selling nickel, that money comes in slowly in cash flows, but the margin calls come in right now. And so they have to liquidate a lot of their company in order to meet those margin calls. So you wouldn't expect nickel miners to go down on an explosion in nickel prices up to $100,000 a ton, which I think was up about 2.5 times in two days. But that's exactly what happened. And this chart that you're looking at is Nickel Mines Limited, an Australian stock, one of the companies that got caught in the short squeeze. And you can see on the day that the LME suspended trading, you have here, the price is at a high. It jumps on the nickel jump to 179, and then all of a sudden it collapses all the way down to 113, which is something like a 40% fall, something like that. I didn't do the math. But why would a company fall 40% when the metal that it mines rockets by 250%, the answer is because they're hedged, which that brings us to our sponsor, which is First Majestic. This is First Majestic. It is a primary silver miner, which means it mines primarily silver. Yes, it has other metals, produces as byproducts, but it is a silver primary miner. Most silver miners, silver is a byproduct of the main metal that they mine, therefore, why is this important and what does it have to do with the nickel squeeze? Because with companies that have silver as a byproduct, you don't know what their hedging activities are. They're hedging against other metals and they can get caught in other short squeezes like what just happened, nickel. So if you have a nickel miner that produces a lot of silver or you have a silver miner that isn't a primary silver miner, it can get caught in other short squeezes and it's dangerous. First Majestic is a primary silver miner. And if you look closely at their 10K, you will see this line here, the company's revenues highlighted are directly dependent on commodity prices that have shown volatility and are beyond the company's control. That is true. This is the key sentence though. The company does not use derivative instruments to hedge its commodity price risk to silver. So if there is a silver spike and there will be a silver spike and we'll get in there in a second as to how that could happen and very soon, just like it just happened in nickel, the collapse in stock price that just hit nickel mines in Australia will not hit First Majestic if that happens to silver because they are unhedged. They are a pure silver play. And that is why in the event that this happens to silver, First Majestic is going to go much, much higher. Let's go to Craig Hemke on what just happened in nickel and how it might affect silver very soon. First of all, here is Craig Hemke's nickel chart. We have here about $50,000 a ton and now goes to about $100,000 overnight, huge gap up, biggest move in LME history. And what did the LME do? Earlier today, he writes, and that's yesterday, the LME announced that all trading was being halted in nickel and that even some legally processed trades were being canceled. Canceled. 
The exchange is also giving consideration to a possible multi-day closure. It still is not open. Today's Thursday. They are going to announce at the earliest when it will open, and that earliest announcement date will be Friday, which means the earliest that the trade can open again will be Monday, and even that is not guaranteed. Why? What are they so afraid of? They're afraid of this. He continues, if this doesn't work to calm things, and if the other base metals soon trade into a similar situation, the LME will face an extinction level event, meaning the entire exchange could go extinct. Why? How can this happen? Well, this will be catastrophic to anyone short and any party needing short-term delivery of the physical metal. This event, should it play out, also has the potential to finally break the bullion bank fractional reserve and digital delivery pricing scheme in gold and silver too. Why? Because as we may already be seeing, once the global investment community figures out that it's all a scam, there are as many as 100 digital to pretend ounces for every physical ounce backing the, the pricing scheme, confidence will rapidly collapse. That's a good general statement as to why the LME could collapse on this. But here's the more technical issue. If you had companies that were short nickel getting squeezed out when the price goes up and Russia is still invading and their markets are being cut off, to the West, then you have other miners of other base metals that are short their own metals that could be affected by this Russian situation that will start covering their contracts, which is already happening. Cobalt is going higher because no other company wants to be caught in a short squeeze on their own metal and go bankrupt. That would be very bad. So once they open up trading again and companies start covering their short contracts, you'll start to see these base metal prices go even higher and higher and higher. Now, what about silver? What is the technical situation there? The technical situation is this. Here are the top silver producers in the world. Number one, of course, you have Mexico, then Peru, then China. Number four is Chile. Number five is Australia. And number six is Russia as of 2020. The sixth biggest silver producer. What do you think is going to happen when that supply is cut off? Now let's go to another chart that you can find on gold charts are us thanks to Nick Laird on the silver shorting situation. This is a chart of the days of world production required to cover short contracts in these commodities. You'll see here that silver is number one. The eight largest traders would take their, the size of their short position would take over 150 days of production in order to cover all the shorts. Why is that? The amount of contracts being shorted is actually much higher in gold than silver, except the size of a silver contract in ounces is 50 times the size of a gold contract. A gold contract is 100 ounces and the silver contract is 5,000 ounces, which makes by the ounce silver the most heavily shorted commodity in the world. So there is a danger of a serious short squeeze in silver. And when silver goes way up in vertical, the dollar goes straight down because the dollar was born under a silver standard, which means it still has value because it can still be traded for some amount of silver. From here, it's important to actually move to gold. Why? What is happening in gold right now? And this is also going to have an effect on silver because as gold goes, so does silver. You see here, the bottom chart shows open interest. The amount of contracts that remain open in gold futures. Never before has it gone above 650,000 contracts except for one time in history and that was when gold broke out of its six-year trading range right here and the bullion banks piled on shorts because they wanted to keep gold capped and it didn't work. We are now at 652,000 contracts this is a day old chart. The current numbers are 652,000. So we are above the 650,000 contract mark for only the second time in history and price keeps going higher and higher. There's one of two things that could happen from here in gold. One is that the bullion banks give up and buy back their contracts in a short squeeze. And the other is that the speculators give up and sell their longs to the bullion banks who cover their contracts. What is going to happen into that? We're going to go to one more piece of news. This is from Zero Hedge, taking it from a Bullion Star by Ronan Manley, Ronan the Destroyer, as he is known. The title, U.S. Tease Up, Stop Russian Gold Act. 
triggering LBMA and COMEX to eject Russian refiners. You know, there isn't even a point in me reading it. You get it from the title. They're ejecting refiners. They're ejecting good delivery bars from the LBMA stockpile. What happens when you artificially take away supply of gold? You will raise the price and you will destroy the reciprocal, the currency that represents the gold. This is what the repo man, Zoltan Pozar, the guy who knows about the plumbing of the financial system, is noting in his latest note to investors. Let's read the first paragraph, shall we? We shall. Bretton Woods 3, writes Zoltan Pozar from Credit Suisse. We are witnessing the birth of Bretton Woods 3, a new world monetary order centered around commodity-based currencies in the East that will likely weaken the Euro dollar system and also contribute to inflationary forces in the West. A crisis is unfolding, a crisis of commodities. You could call that, in my words, a crisis of reality because Above all the financialization and fake shorts and uncovered contracts that are traded all the time on all these paper exchanges, you have physical reality and it's time that we return back to it and it is happening right now. A crisis is unfolding, writes Pozar, a crisis of commodities. Commodities are collateral and collateral is money. And the crisis is about the rising allure of outside money over inside money. Bretton Woods too was built on inside money and its foundations crumbled a week ago and the G7 seized Russia's FX reserves. When the G7 sees Russia's FX reserves, what they were saying is that the pretend money that we invented, the money substitutes, are really our property and we can say they're worthless, so stop holding them. That weakens the currency. There's another much simpler way to put this. If this is a crisis of commodities and commodities are collateral and collateral is money, we know very simply that silver is money and the commodity money of choice for the public, for the world, is and always has been and always will be silver. That is the money that people will return to. And that is the money that is being returned to. And there will be a short squeeze in silver and it will be epic. Exactly when it will happen, I don't know. But you want to be armed with physical silver and silver miners, primary silver miners that are not hedged like First Majestic, who thankfully is sponsoring this video. This is Rafi from The Endgame Investor coming at you with this week's Silver Report for Arcadia Economics. What is going to happen next week? I don't know, but I'm telling you one thing. It's going to be damn exciting.